Welcome to Music Vlog. Today we're at Brussels Comic Con. Also, happy Halloween because it's October 31st. Maybe we're going to see some ghoulies, but you never know. Are you going to join me on this adventure? Well, here we have the complete map of the event. just started for the early birds and this is the vendor labyrinth and we will get to that very soon so this is where the Q&A's are going to be held hopefully when it's not too busy I'm going to film Gibney from the Rings and Octavia from the Hunger but I can't promise yet so stay tuned <laughs> Baby Yoda is going on his on his way. These are from cosplayers. And of course, they are called Range of Ancient Belgium. Here we got the belts. Still love 
that matter. And avian. It's like this great.
which I'm going to do a video on very soon. Of course, the mommy, Scooby, Baby Yoda, and here we go more Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda waffles, which we also made a video. Found something Halloween related. Of course, Gremsters, the Gremlins. Here we've got Game and Gremlin, just the regular Gremlin, and of course, Try. Halloween lineup. Here we got Chucky, Beetlejuice, Pennywise, Killer Clowns. I saw a Killer Clown just a minute ago. Don't put me in the cotton candy! <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to buy that and I will go to make an unboxing pretty soon. Everything Harry Potter. There's some Disney. Most of it is Harry Potter. seen before. Have you no homes to go to? Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Now, who has some silly questions? No. First of all, let's get something out of the way. One, uh, yes, it is wonderful working with Steven Spielberg. Yes, Peter Jackson is a remarkable genius of a director. Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to tell you whether I'm in Indiana Jones 5 or not. No. Um, what else? Uh, uh, and no, Orly Bloom and I did not hang out a lot together <laughs> when he was 20 and I was 55. <laughs> um, I think that covers the main topic. I think, I think you've done the, all the questions. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah. Sit, uh, sit, sit, sit. You sit, John. Now, how long have you been doing this? Me? I have been doing this, oh, let's think. I got my big break back in the mid-2010s. And, you know, I've just sort of been going from Comic-Con to Comic-Con, sort of interviewing and things like that. Very, very good. Yeah. You, you trained as a... Cinema technician, did you not? Oh, I, I have trained in film, yes. Oh. Yeah. I, I, no, we actually interviewed me now, are we just? <laughs> oh, well, I'm uh, just interested, actually. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, if you want to talk, because you love cameras, don't you? And you, you very much understand film, uh, not just as an actor, as an... Uh... I understand more and more about less and less. <laughs> uh, it's one of the characteristics of age, you realise how little you really know and how much you keep forgetting. Anyway, come on, let's <laughs> ask some interesting... These are young, bright, yeah. intelligent people. Ask questions. Oh, John wants questions straight from you, then get your hand up and we'll come one, two there straight away. Do not be shy. The, the, the gentleman from behind. Yeah, we've got microphones coming, they're over here. The, what is the worst location you've been on? <laughs> you mean, where did I have more dysentery than the not? Uh, We're not talking about your personal life, John. 
Um, well, there, there was Raiders of the Lost Ark when we were in Tunisia, and we all came down with a with a bug that. Uh, I, t I tell you, I lost 22 pounds in two days. That's about uh, nine kilos, I think, in two days. Um, uh, that wasn't good, but um, the worst location. Um, well, there was that place in Kenya where uh, the, the director had a nervous breakdown and we were all billeted in an ex-brothel. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was interesting too. But by and large, come on, you're there for the work. Uh, and sometimes you get great things. I mean, when I did the Bond film, uh, we had a, a three or four week break between Vienna and Tangiers. And so I hired a car and I just did a wonderful tour with a very beautiful woman. Um, for three and a half weeks. It's hell being an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah awful, awful job, isn't it, John? Um, um, is there anywhere where um, you just, do you have any bad memories of, of filming, or has it been quite a lovely, just every job's different and every job's a sound? No, there are a few bad memories. Um, I hate working on those films where you turn up and everyone is deadly silent. <laughs> Uh, because you know that someone is throwing a moody fit and it's generally the young actor who has taken too much coke and can't focus on what he's doing and his relationships are falling apart and and he's forgetting his lines and he's forgetting his lines and saying I can't stand that camera in my face get him off the set get him off the set I want him fired and this sort of thing you know and, yeah, and you know that that's just going to be a moment of total misery. Um, but by and large, that doesn't last very long. Uh, our, our industry is very much about um, making things work rather than stopping things working. Uh, and that's one reason why all of you should work in the film industry for at least six months, especially the younger ones, because you will learn one great truth. Nobody wants, nobody wants you, people around them, who say, we can't do this because. What we want are people who find solutions to problems. What we want are the people who say, all right, we'll do that. When the director says to you, we are shooting that way after lunch, and I want two zebra in the background, <laughs> um, don't say, sir, we're in the middle of a Caribbean island, and there are no zebra to be had in 5,000 miles. You say, right, sir. Two zebra, background, after lunch. You go out and preferably hire, or if you have to, buy two donkeys and some paint. <laughs> and you paint them and you put them in the background and you go up to the director after lunch and say, I uh, got you your zebra in the, in the background, sir. And uh, he'll go, what? Uh, zebra? In the bar, yeah, yes, it was a stupid idea. Anyway, I'm shooting that way. <laughs> Seen you dislike the most? I dislike the yeah. most. I I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, look, it's brilliant. It is a brilliant film. Impossible to make out of a film out of that book which is why Tolkien sold it so cheaply originally. Uh, it is the genius of Peter Jackson, who saw that you could make a movie out of it, who wanted to make a, a who spent his life creating an entire studio system in New Zealand so that he could make The Hobbit and, and make Lord of the Rings. He would have preferred to make The Hobbit first, actually. Um, I don't think there's a 
single frame in Lord of the Rings that I could better. I mean, I've seen some, I saw, I, obviously, I, I saw some of the footage uh, when it was being shot, but the way it was edited and put together, it's the match. You, when you've got enough film, you can make lots of different films out of them, to be honest with you. Your choice as an editor would be different from your choice as an editor, or my choice as an editor. Uh, you know, actors would say, well, um, the cut that has me in it more prominently is probably the best cut. But the greatness of a director is to be able, we get back to the old thing again, to tell the story with what he's got and the way he wants to tell it. Jackson was a genius, is a genius, and uh, I wouldn't have changed a frame in the end. One more. Brilliant. So we got one more question down here. So, um, did you take anything with you from the Lord of the Rings set, like a trinket or a piece of clothing or something else? I was given an axe. Every dwarf should have an axe or two and travel with it. But, you know, you can't get on a plane these days, you know, with an axe and sharp. They say, you might hurt somebody. They say, well, what do you think an axe is for? It is to hurt people, bad people. Ah, uh, but you might hurt the, the stewardess. We dwarves do not attack women, and we dwarves do not attack innocent people. We're there for orcs and rukai and bad things. And that's why if you have a dwarf on a plane with an axe, nothing bad will happen. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I just had a question which moved to my ear from uh, the creators of Comic Con to end on this. If you could return to one franchise as any character you played, so if they said we're going to follow on years later in that franchise, I know Indiana Jones 5, you're not going to say anything, but it's in the air. Is there any character you'd love to return to? I'd like to do two seasons more of a revitalized... say Sliders. Sliders. Yes. Um, I, I drew up a proposal suggesting how it could be done, that we could get the original four back together, and... Uh, and we would accumulate different characters in different situations. We could see the ones that looked like the audience would really bind to them and, 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 and grow with you. And then after a, a couple of seasons, we would start to lose some of the original characters. I wouldn't want to do it for more than two years. Uh, and, uh, but the idea was that finally you'd leave Jerry there essentially becoming the older Jerry and also a bit of the, the, the older, the middle-aged Maximilian Arturo. Uh, and, and he would be left there with a, a group of really photogenic younger people who can really act and were interested. And they would do it then for eight or ten years and then stop it. Uh, and, and pick it up again Perhaps 20 years later, when those younger actors who have been brought into the show and have really developed, were ready now in middle age to... to oh, I love it. Yeah, it would, it would make sense. Sliders is the biggest missed opportunity in science fiction on television. You can go anywhere in space and anywhere in time. The only limitation was the imagination of the writers, and and the failure of imagination was not with the writers alone, it was with the studios who just didn't get what they had. They had a jewel there. They had Bitcoin at 50 cents, <laughs> um, and, uh, and they blew it. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry, the old, the old irritations come through. Hey, I like to. Any, anything that starts the sliders, come back, Jane. I'm on board. Very good. Uh, may, I, may I just thank them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, by the way, is there anybody else who's got another question? 
very good. You are a wonderful author. You're... Oh, there's a microphone coming behind you. Yeah. Um, I've seen that you have many different ties you wear. Is it... It's penguins. Is there any story behind them? Uh, yes. Well, no, there's not a story behind them. There is... I mean, just look around you. Look at the girls, they're all interestingly dressed. And the blokes, God, what a dreary lot we are. We're meant to be peacocks. And look at me, I'm wearing a bloody suit. It's the only opportunity men have for showing colour, really, is in things like ties. And nobody in France wears a tie anyway. That's why you're so intelligent. Wearing a tie actually reduces your blood flow to the brain by 7%, <laughs> which is why I think I'm in Oklahoma at the moment. <laughs> you um, are, John. You are. But, uh, but, but, um, so that's really the story. I, it's, it's my own private sort of attempt at being a peacock. And you should have fun ties, not just stripes for the club and things like that. Yesterday was Marilyn Monroe. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, the sad thing about it is that if you really want to be remembered, die young. That's the key to it all. Mm. But anyway, I actually met I, 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 a friend of mine whose daughter is 15, uh, who, who has actually fallen deeply in love with Kurt Cobain. And who, must, who would probably be what? 55 or 60 by now, if he'd been alive, but no, he died young and so romantically. <laughs> right. Anyway, I, I just want to thank you all for being, and you particularly, because you have been the most intelligent, wise, judicious, thinking member of the audience. Tell me your name, will you? Very good. Well, there you are. See, this is the future of, of film and audience. And, uh, and the future of us all. Make babies, girls and boys. Make babies. The smartest thing you will ever do in life. Take care. There you go. Oh, and you too. I oh. didn't see. John, he's here all day. What a gen. Look at him go.
you want me to sit? Okay, we'll do a sofa together chat. Welcome. Let's get intimate. Yeah, so with our uh, conversation. Yeah, if this if we, the tradition at Comic Con is the last one is we just do a really heavy therapy session. We want tears, we want crying, then some laughter, then some more tears, then like whatever you're feeling. You're probably way cheaper than my therapist, so it's all good. Yeah, but I'm also way worse. So. <laughs> You know, the progress you make today won't be great. We all went through COVID, so you know. Yeah, exactly. It's perfect. How, and, uh, how was your pandemic? My pandemic was great, actually. I cooked a lot, and I traveled a lot from my kitchen to my laundry machine. Got to get your steps up. And that's it, <laughs> like everybody else's. Did you, did you ex experiment with any new cooking styles? Any new recipes? I made a lot of Greek food, as I am a Greek woman. Um, and I learned how to garden. Did you? I did. There's the one skill All I very boring learn. things, people, I know. They're waiting for the exciting stuff. You say that, but my brain's going, please tell me how to keep a plant alive, because it's impossible. You buy a snake plant. What? The nickname for it is mother-in-law's tongue, because okay. it never dies. <laughs> it's true. Is that a thing? There you go. And there, so everyone who was here for the plant-based stuff, I told you I'd get it in, so there you go. Um, yeah, where did you spend your last pandemic? I hope there's not another one. Um, the only pandemic that we've all been alive for, I spent it in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Oh, because you are... Canadian, yes. But you're Greek, but you're Greek-Canadian, is that... That's it. My parents were born in, in Greece, yeah. Uh, do you, are you fluent in Greek? I'm a step above mediocre. That's, do you know what, that for me that is fluent. Like, okay. you can say anything and be like, yeah, 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 no idea, no idea. It's about as good as my French, which is also a step above mediocre. So thank you all for being patient with me today when I tried to speak French to uh, those of you I've met today. 2020, when all of us realized that we had to stay home for two years, so we didn't get a rap party or anything, and they're like, everybody go home, there's a pandemic on the rise. So I was like, wait a minute, I just spent the past eight years of my life shooting a uh, TV show about a pandemic, and then we all stepped into a real life one. So, you know that saying, art imitates life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Did you have a tick list of things we got right, things we got wrong? <laughs> Take notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird, I wasn't, because obviously, Everyone likes the 100. I like to I like to really not talk about it for at least five minutes. So they're like, when will you mention the show? Okay. But you, you've nailed it now. You've gone so professionally into it. It's not my first rodeo. I know. It's not mine, but I just like to be awful. So okay. there you go. Um, eight years. Yes. That's a long time to have a job. I don't think I've ever had a job for eight years. Most of my 20s and early 30s, but I've just aged myself. Damn. But yeah, it was a great time. I was so excited to play Octavia. She was a badass, right? Super fun. No fans, obviously. No Zero. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Honestly, some of these guys have been waiting here around half an hour, just like, I gotta be near the front. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna walk you to the taxi afterwards, I don't trust any of them. I do, you're all very lovely. Have you been enjoying Belgium? I've been enjoying Belgium very much, thank you for asking. The people here are so kind, you're all so awesome. Um, and the chocolate, I must say, oh my God. best I ever had. So good, isn't it? Do you find that, in a, like, because TV is that now where, it's everywhere. Like, most countries, the big shows, they're everywhere. Do you find that hard to get around your head, or do you love that sort of thing? Well, when I did a con in Paris, I know I've seen a few of you that uh, visited me there, and I, for the first time I heard my voice dubbed over en français, and it sounds nothing like me. I don't know what actress they hired to dub over Octavia's voice, because Octavia talks like this. And I found the woman they hired talks like this. <laughs> Chopping people's heads off, sounding like this. <laughs> it's like just really perky, isn't it? I know. I love this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I didn't make you mouse out. So sorry. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a, a say in it. So yeah. Um, if you had to dub yourself in French, oh god, would, would that be? Would you still go with that voice? Could you still do that? Which voice are you talking about? This one, yeah. Could you? How would that sound in French from you? Je suis Octavia. Je ne comprends pas. <laughs> Je ne parle pas français. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you should just 
if, if you do have another lockdown, spend the entire lockdown dubbing your own French version. I'm saying that'd be a great Duolingo project, actually. Maybe in my next life. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I'm never doing that. Uh, have <laughs> Basically. You, yeah. Have you, have you always uh, wanted to act, or was that something you fell into? I always love finding people's origin stories. Say that one more time, your accent's thick too. Yeah, my accent is very <laughs> northern English, so... Je ne comprends pas. Yeah. Uh, have you always wanted to act? Was that something you'd always wanted to do, or was that something you fell into? No. Um, I actually went to um, post-secondary for television broadcast journalism. Wow. I used to be a news reporter. Wow. Yep. Um, because my European parents wanted me to get a real job. Um, and then I realized I would just have to tell people bad news every day. So I quit. Wow. And um, I got noticed playing drums because I've been a drummer for 16 years. Yep. Yeah. And I got scouted by an agent and say la vie. Nice. That was quite the CV. Your LinkedIn is through the roof. <laughs> um, how did you get into the drums? Was that something you wanted to do as well? Or was that just something? Well, because my European parents wanted me to play something elegant, like <laughs> piano. And so when I was a waitress in college, I saved up all my money and I bought a drum kit to piss off my mother. And it worked. Amazing. <laughs> I'm getting a sense a lot of your career decisions are like, yes. what do you want, Mum? Exact opposite. Exactly. Oh, that's amazing. There's a reason why I play a rebel on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, art imitating life. That's brilliant. Um, do you still play the drums? Of course I do. Oh, I generally wish I could go, because we have a drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! Yeah. No, we don't have a drum kit, guys, sorry. But if we did, I'd play it for you. Like you would absolutely boss it. In a skirt. Yeah, I'd have to figure that one out. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been in a band? Like, I've been in lots of bands, yeah. Like, what was your, what was your, were you in a high school band? What was your first band? Oh, my first band? Ugh, just like childhood stuff, but cool story. Um, the Hundred shot in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and all the TV shows in town created their own bands. So there was the Hundred Band, there was the Arrow Band, um, and some Supergirl, and um, the Hundred Band won the competition. Yeah, it was, I love the bands. Yes. Oh, wow. It was for charity. It was a really good thing, but um, it was a lot of fun. I'm not going to make you sing it, but what was your song? What was it called? Um, oh, we did lots. Lots of classic rock. Leonard Skinner oh, and classic. stuff like that. Yeah? Oh, 80s, 80s, 80s and 70s rock. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to ask. Is that so I really wanted to include that one uh, Q&A session with Marie, but people were just pushing and it's very hot. I really felt uncomfortable during this whole pandemic, so I'm sorry I didn't I include a little bit of the Q&A session, but I'm sorry. So next time I hope they have better seating areas, like now you had to stand and there was this Q&A person with a microphone, he was just up and in everywhere. I just had to avoid many phones and everything, so yeah, next time. I'm sorry Marie. So I hope you liked this little video. Um, it was a bit short because it was so crowded and there wasn't really time to film anything because people wanted to see their merchandise I guess. So next will be facts. And I hope I have more time to film, more free spots to film, because people are just pushing everywhere. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider to do so. Leave a like and we will see you next time. Bye bye!